my name is Abhishek and uh, I've noticed that there's a lot of interest in machine learning but there aren't very many tutorials that are very good at explaining what this is so I've created this tutorial or the series of tutorials depends on how long it goes to try to explain how neural nets work and so hope you enjoy it be implementing what is more commonly known as a feed forward neural network from scratch all right let's start looking at a method that I really like when understanding neural networks. This method was developed by Andrew J. Karpathy. I don't really know exactly how to say his name. He works at OpenAI and he used to be a PhD student at Stanford. A link to his blog post is down below in the description and that's kind of what I'll be basing my tutorial off of. So thank you very much for that. Uh, but his whole premise is that the best way to understand neural networks is to use real gates. What are real gates? Well, take a look at this slide, and it should make sense. We have an, So for the first one, there's an addition gate. We have an input of A and B. A plus B is equal to C. Therefore, the gate actually just adds the value of A and B, and then puts it into C. Let's look at a multiplication gate. A times B is equal to C. What about a subtraction gate? A minus B is equal to C. You get the point, right? So these gates perform a function based off of their inputs, and get an output, right? This should make sense. Let's look at what we call the back propagation for a gate. So it's like the derivative, the partial derivative with respect to the inputs of a gate. If you don't understand what partial derivatives are, there's a great Khan Academy tutorial on it. That's also in the description below, so you should take a look at it. So these are the derivative gates. Don't freak out if you don't understand what's going on, but we'll take a look at one example. Let's take a look at the plus example. This example says that DC is the input and the outputs are just dc. But it's actually dc times 1 for this first input and dc times 1 for this second input. Why 1? Right? And so when we look at this first gate right here, we have a and b. These are actually partial derivatives, right? I said that. So that means the derivative with respect to a for the first one and the derivative with respect to b for the second one. What's the derivative with respect to a of a plus b? We treat b as a constant, so b goes to 0, and then we treat a as a variable. And so a goes to 1. 1 plus 0 is equal to 1. So the der partial derivative of a plus b with respect to a is 1. Try the same thing for b. b is a variable. a is a constant. a goes to 0. b goes to 1. 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 again. And then so we get 1, 1. And then we multiply it by this derivative dc. And don't worry about what dc actually is for the time being. It's just a derivative input. We know that doesn't really make much sense right now, but just bear with me here. Just forget about DC. All right, multiplication. Let's, let's do one more example to make sure that y'all understand what's going on. So A times B. What's the derivative of A times B with respect to A? A is treated as a variable. B is treated as a constant. That means that it's B because A goes to 1 and B just stays there. B times 1 is equal to B. Look at it like this. What's the derivative of 2, which could be B, times x. So what's the derivative of 2x? Well, it's just 2. And 2 was the value of b, and x was the value of a. If you can think about it like that, if that confused you more, forget if I ever said that. But it's going to be b for this, and then it's going to be a for this. And that is essentially what we have. We have b here as the output for the derivative, and a here. And essentially what I did was I did that for all of these gates right here. So try that on your own and see if you understand how I got there. If you don't understand partial derivatives, Either don't worry about it or take a look at the Khan Academy video down in the link description below. All right, so let's take an example and we're going to look at one of these nodes, right? We're going to make a neural net, just kidding, we're not going to make a neural net just yet. We're going to take a look at one of these nodes, the addition node. So A and B are the inputs and C is an output. A is 3, B is 4. I wonder what C is. Hmm. Is it 8? Is it six? No, it's 7. 3 plus 4 is 7. Right? I mean, this is genius, right? No, no. I mean, but this is the basis of how a feed-forward neural network works. So 3 plus 4 is 7. Say that we want to increase the value of C, right? But we can only change A. I'm going to place that restriction that we can only change A. That means we then treat B as a constant. And so we have to go back and we have to say, look, Abishak, you said that, you know, the addition derivative gates are this, but why do you have DC here, DC here, and then 0 here? Well, the 0 is there because we're treating B as a constant. Right, so when we go back to the first 
slide, we can say, all right, we're going to treat B as a constant in all of these. It's going to be A plus 2, okay? A plus 2. And what's the derivative of A plus 2 with respect to A? Well, that's going to be 1, right? So that's what we have here, DC. What's the derivative of A plus 2? 2 is B, right? What is the derivative of A plus 2 with respect to 2? Well, you can't take the derivative of a constant with respect to a constant, so it's zero. I mean, the derivative of a constant is zero, and so that's why here you have zero. So whenever you have a constant, you have to place zero as the derivative output to get the correct answer. All right, so take a look at that and see if that makes any sense. All right, cool. Now we're going to plug in plus one for dc, because we want to increase the value of the circuit. And what if we wanted to decrease the value of the circuit? We put minus one, or any value lower than zero. If we wanted to increase it like we are, we could put plus one or any value above zero. Say that we didn't want to change it at all. We'll just place dc to zero, and then you can see it's all zero, so nothing changes. So when dc is positive, the output is increasing. That's how derivatives work. When the derivative is positive, the function is increasing. When the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. The best way of explaining this is looking at a car. The position of a car versus the velocity of a car. The velocity is the derivative of position. When the velocity is positive, when you're going 10 miles an hour, your position is increasing. It's, it's going to be more positive. And so you're going to say, all right, well, I'm at mile marker 20. I'm at mile marker 21. Say that you put your car in reverse and you're going at negative 10 miles an hour. Well, you're going to go from mile marker 21 to mile marker 20 to mile marker 19, right? And so your position is going to be decreasing when your velocity is going to be decreasing and velocity is a derivative in this case, right? And then this is the example that we're doing. And so it's kind of the same thing that we're doing to this function. We can increase and decrease this function respectively using the same method. How exactly are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use something called Newton's method. And this is how it kind of works. And it's exactly how it works. You take the previous value, a, right? We multiply it by some arbitrary step size, 1.1, 1, 1, 1, whatever. And then we multiply it by the previous derivative, right? And so what that'll do is, is well, I'll show you what it'll do, is say that we have an original point right here, right? That's our original point on the graph. This is an arbitrary graph. This is not the graph here. I just kind of put that off to the side. This is an arbitrary graph. And we want to really just kind of find um, what the next point is so we can make our function increase in value, you know? We'll take the derivative at that point. The derivative is the slope of the function at that point. We'll take a step size, and this is the step size, right? And then we will multiply the previous derivative by the step size and then add it to the previous value. This is essentially moving it up, that line right there. And so you can see that it diverges from the actual function. And the bigger the step size, the bigger the divergence. So you'll see that the step size is actually very important when optimizing neural networks. All right, and so you can see in this example, a nu is equal to the previous value of a, which is 3, plus a step size of 0 0.01, which is a pretty small, you know, small step size, multiplied by the derivative there that we've calculated. Since we've plugged in dc to be 1, then this value also is 1 here. And then we get 3.1 for a. And then for b, we've decided that the derivative is 0 since it's a constant, and b's value remains unchanged. This is important. Why? Because if B was an input like a stock price or an image, we can't just change our image or change our stock price and then say, oh, look, we see an increase or we see a decrease. We just can't do that. And so we keep B same and we change what we can, which is a multiplier, etc., etc. So our new output is going to be 7.1, which is actually an increase over what we wanted. Now, you know, try plugging in a value that's lower than zero. You know, try negative one, and you'll see that you'll get a lower value at the end of the neural network. You'll get A to be 2.99 when you plug in negative 1. Try it yourself. Uh, and, and you'll say, wow, all right, so the value of C is actually less than 7 now because we've decided to do that. In the next section, we'll start looking at examples of neural networks, uh, et cetera, et cetera.